Welcome back to the Britannia Coin Company. We're a coin dealer based in Royal Woods and Bassett in the UK. Today I thought we'd look at some of the valuable tiaras and crowns worn by monarchs on our coinage. With monarchs being a popular obverse on coins not just in the UK but abroad as well, and also some featuring coat of arms with crowns, I thought we'd take a bit of a deeper dive into what these crowns and tiaras actually are. So let's start at home with Queen Elizabeth II. We start off with the one-off portrait by James Butler, which only appeared on a few coins back in 2015, the year the Queen became the longest reigning UK monarch. On this design, she is wearing the George IV state diadem. The crown was created by Rundle and Bridge for the coronation of King George IV in 1820, which he wore during the procession to Westminster Abbey. In accordance to the King's lavish personal tastes, this coronation was the most expensive and extravagant ever staged. The diadem was inherited by his sister-in-law, Queen Adelaide, the wife of King William IV, and has been worn by every reigning queen and king's consort since. The crown was adapted by Queen Victoria and then Queen Alexandra, the wife of King Edward VII, and finally Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. Our current Queen wore it first in public in her first state opening of Parliament in 1952 and then again in the procession on her way to the coronation in 1953. She also wears it on the annual state opening of Parliament. The crown comprises 1,333 diamonds with four cross pâtés alternating with four bouquets of roses, thistles and shamrocks. It has two bands of pearls either side of a row of diamonds at the base of the crown. The crown is also featured on the Queen's third and fifth portraits. If we look at the reverse of this coin, we can see another crown. With creative license from the artist in the design, it's not clear what crown this is exactly. It is referred to as the coronation crown, but given that there are three worn by the Queen before, during and after the coronation, that doesn't exactly narrow it down. One does stand out though, and it's because of the curved arches on the crown, I believe this could be the St Edward's crown, arguably the most important crown in the royal collection. It was named after St Edward the Confessor and has been traditionally used to crown English and British monarchs since the 13th century. There was a 200 year pause on this tradition after the English Civil War, where the crown was broken broken up and sold, but was recreated in time for the crowning of Charles II and the restoration of the monarchy. After 1680, the crown wouldn't be used again until 1911, when King George V revived the tradition and all subsequent monarchs have used it in their coronations. The crown is fitted with 444 precious stones and the previous imitation pearls on the arches were replaced with gold beads plated in platinum. The crown is seen as a holy relic and has only been removed from the Tower of London on two occasions in the last 70 years, once for the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II and the second time in 2013 to mark the 60th anniversary of the coronation when it was displayed in Westminster Abbey. With five pounds of gold in the construction of the crown on its own worth 100,000 pounds, it is suggested to be worth in the region of 35 million pounds. But realistically, with the historical value of the item, it is surely a priceless piece. If we look at the 1997 Golden Wedding Anniversary five pound coin, we see the Queen pictured wearing the Queen Mary's Girls of Great Britain and Ireland tiara. This is the same tiara that she is pictured wearing in her second and fourth portraits on coins. The tiara was originally gifted to her grandmother, Queen Mary, in 1893 for her wedding to King George V. It was given to the Queen for her wedding to Prince Philip in 1947. The tiara was originally topped with pearls, but after the coronation of King George V and Queen Mary, she had them replaced with diamonds. The tiara could also originally be removed from the mount and worn as a necklace, a multifunctional tiara, but like a reversible tie, not all of us are going to be able to pull this off. It is said that the Queen affectionately refers to this tiara as Granny's tiara, having been given to her by her grandmother and was a central item in her jewellery wardrobe as a princess and later Queen. Given its beauty coupled with its light weight, it has again become one of the Queen's most favoured tiaras to wear at official functions. From Queen Elizabeth II to Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother, I have here a 2002 silver proof memorial five pound crown. Interestingly, it was researching this tiara in a previous video that inspired this video. So do go and check that out if you haven't already. The Queen Mother is pictured on this coin wearing the Greville tiara. The tiara was bought for Margaret Greville by her father William, who was a multi-millionaire brewer. He gifted it to her in 1891. She was a socialite who threw lavish parties and was close friends of the Queen Mother, whom she had helped foster the relationship with the future King George VI. When she died, she was widowed with no children 
children and left her jewellery to the Queen Mother, who would often wear this tiara. The original design of the tiara didn't have the clusters of diamonds protruding at the top, with some referring it as a diamond bejeweled waste paper bin, until in 1953 the Queen Mother had it altered. When the Queen Mother passed away, this tiara was inherited by her daughter, Queen Elizabeth II, who when Prince Child married his now wife Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall in 2005, gave it to her on a long term loan. Camilla reportedly prefers this tiara over the other tiaras that have been given to her over the long term basis. On these two coins featuring Queen Elizabeth II and her father George VI, again with artistic license, the crown they are both wearing appears to be the Imperial State Crown. This was another crown the Queen wore during her coronation ceremony on her departure. The crown has existed in various forms since the 15th century. The currently used version was created in 1937 for the coronation of King George VI. It comprises 2,868 diamonds, 17 sapphires, 11 emeralds, 269 pearls and 4 rubies. A couple of the notable gems in the crown include the Stuart Sapphire and the Queen's personal favourite, the Black Prince's Ruby. The crown was created so that a new monarch could leave Westminster Abbey after the coronation with a crown, as the St Edward's crown was considered a holy relic and is to be used only during the coronation. The Imperial State crown is worn at the state opening of Parliament, however in recent years it has sat beside the Queen. With it weighing over a kilogram, it can't be particularly comfortable for a monarch in her 90s. This year, with the Queen missing the state opening of Parliament, the crown sat beside Prince Charles throughout the ceremony. The two coins featured here are a jersey one twelfth of a shilling from 1960 and a one shilling from East Africa minted in 1952. Let us not forget Queen Victoria who in celebration of her golden jubilee saw this new portrait on her coins. This is a five sovereign coin, part of a set we featured recently in another video. This portrait features a special crown, it is a miniature of the imperial state crown created in 1870 so she could wear it over her mourning cap. After her death it was left to the crown estate with a couple of the Queen's consorts wearing it, the last being Queen Mary, wife of King George V, who stopped wearing it after the death of her husband, and it has been on display in the Tower of London in the Jewel House ever since. One more British coin I have here is a 1927 George V proof wreath crown. Called a wreath crown for the wreath around the central crown, these are highly collectible coins as few were struck. With issues from 1927 and onwards given by the Bank of England to favoured clients at Christmas, they were struck between 1927 and 1936 with the exception of 1935. The crown on the coin is again not an exact image of a real crown, perhaps being either the St Edward's crown or a previous incarnation of the current imperial state crown. I have here a silver penny from Scotland which would have been minted during the reign of King Alexander III between 1249 and 1286. He is crowned on this coin, but it is not the Royal Crown of Scotland, as that wouldn't be created until 1540, and it's the oldest surviving set of crown jewels in the British Isles. Itself a recreation of a previous crown from around 1504, much like the St Edward Crown, this could be another that has been remade for new monarchs over time. I have this fantastic coin from Guernsey, with a value of 10 shillings minted in 1966 as a non-circulating commemorative coin. We see the portrait of King William I, or better known as William the Conqueror, and he is again pictured wearing a really interesting crown. It is suggested he was coronated with the same crown as belonged to Edward the Confessor, and in depictions from the time it does appear similar in style, but with little to go on it is impossible to say if it is the St Edward's crown, and even if it was it would look different from the current one given that it was recreated almost 600 years after the Battle of Hastings. We travel next to Denmark where we see a portrait of Queen Margarita II in which she is wearing the Princess Louis of Netherlands Pearl Poiret Tiara. It was created in Berlin in 1825. Queen Louise left it to the Danish Royal Property Trust after her death which makes it the property of the reigning monarch and cannot be sold or given away. The tiara is fitted with diamonds and 14 pear-shaped pearls. If we look at the reverse of this coin, it reveals the coin to be a 20 kroner. 
but more importantly if we look to the top of the design above the coat of arms sits a crown. This is the crown of Christian V made in 1670 and used in the coronation of all Denmark's absolute monarchies. The crown is also used at the death of a sovereign where it is laid atop a coffin whilst laying in state. If we look at this coin, a one krona from Sweden, we see another coat of arms. Atop this coat of arms is the royal crown of Sweden, also called the crown of King Eric XIV. It was made in Stockholm in 1561. It features pearls and gemstones including rubies, emeralds and diamonds and the crown is still used in ceremonies today. On this one crown from Norway we see another crown on the reverse. This is the crown of Norway and was created in 1818 in Stockholm. The crown has been used at four coronations and has been laid on the coffins of all deceased monarchs since King Carl Johann's death in 1844. We've looked at a lot of crowns and tiaras so far but Queen Juliana of the Netherlands gives us something new with a dual crowned cool or cap which she wore at her inauguration after the abdication of her mother due to health complications in 1948. If we turn the coin over to the reverse, it shows the coin to be a one gulden from 1969 and there features another coat of arms topped with a crown. This crown dates back to 1815 when a new King Willem was proclaimed this crown was present, however not used to crown him due to its size and weight. The crown was probably used at the funerals of monarchies up to the 19th century. In 1840 a new crown was created and has been used at four investitures and one funeral since 1898. This 25 peseta from Spain features a prominent crown. The heraldic crown does not physically exist but a crown known as the Corona Tumula has been present at the swearing in of Spanish monarchs since the 18th century. It's kept on public display at the Royal Palace of Madrid. This one franc from Luxembourg features the Grand Ducal Crown of Luxembourg to the top. This is not a crown that exists and interestingly they also don't have a king, rather a Grand Duke. Previously sharing the Dutch royal family, when in 1890 the Dutch king died leaving no male heirs, Luxembourg's law of succession did not allow for a female monarchy, so instead Adolf of Nassau became the Grand Duke and his descendants reign to this day. Our penultimate interesting foreign crown is on this coin, this time featuring on an Icelandic one area from 1942, the crown at the top might look familiar as it is the Royal Dutch Crown as they shared a monarchy until 1944 when Iceland declared itself a republic and the crown was removed from their coat of arms. Finally we finish on a country you wouldn't link with royalty nowadays and that is the USA with a $1 coin featuring the Statue of Liberty who wears quite the prominent crown, probably the largest crown we're going to see in this video. The statue was a joint effort between France and the US to symbolize their lasting friendship between the two people. The statue was dedicated in 1886 and has become one of the most iconic landmarks in the US. Its crown features seven spikes to represent the seven oceans and seven continents and features 25 windows to look out of but with a four to six month waiting list you'll need forward planning to be able to climb into the largest crown that we've seen today. Well there we go, a fascinating look at some of the crowns on our UK coins and some coins abroad as well. Do let me know down in the comments which was your favourite and if you know of any other coins that features crowns or tiaras that you like then let me know in the comments too. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well, it means you won't miss any of our future uploads. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram where we post lots of pictures of our coins. We're on Twitter and TikTok. We've got our shop and online store. There are links in the description to our website and related products that have featured in this video. But I'll see you next time for more amazing coins from the Britannia Coin Company.